This video describes the contact lens module available in the Medmont E300 corneal topographer. Start by selecting the best map to construct your lens from. Ideally, use the composite map feature. That way you're able to image 100% of the visible iris, which gives us a large analysis area to construct the lens from. Go to Home and Contact Lens. Then choose from the lens option, the design that you prefer. In this case, under this pull down menu, we've selected the custom four curve. We can enter in the Spectacle RX here if we haven't done it on the patient window. That brings up the design window. The first step is to determine the right lens diameter. Measure the visible iris diameter by going to annotate. One of the ruler options is to select the ruler, drag it from one side of the cornea to the other. We see this is a 12.5 visible iris, slightly larger than the norm of about 11.8 to 12 millimeters. That will cause us to choose a slightly larger than standard lens of 10 millimeters and apply. Now we click our cursor in the center and determine the amount of fluid. The TFC or tear film clearance is nine microns. There's nine microns of fluid between lens and cornea and that's visible on the graph. Zero along the x-axis is the corneal surface. And we see in the center, we have some fluid between the apex of the eye and the back of the lens. So this is displaying the fluid layer between lens and cornea. To see fluorescein molecules, we must have 20 microns of fluid between lens and cornea. With nine microns, our lens is effectively too flat. It will appear as touch through the slit lamp. So let's steepen the base curve a couple steps take ourselves up to about 20 microns. Now we're at 22. This is good for apical clearance. We should move the lens to the geometric center of the eye where we would like to see it centering. If we were looking at this lens through the slit lamp, is this the center of the eye? Next, let's take this white axis line around by grabbing the little handle at the end holding it down and rotating it, we can observe the fluid layer underneath the contact lens. Let's look for the point where the lens lands on two opposing sides. And we see that here, landing at three o'clock here, landing at nine o'clock here. So this lens will have good lateral centration with its landing at three and nine o'clock. Let's find out how much fluid exists under the steepest meridian of the eye where the fluid layer would be the thickest. And we see heading north across this dotted section of the line here corresponding with the dotted here we have 20 microns in the center but a slight increase as we move north. At the edge of the optic zone where the peripheral curves begin to kick in somewhere around this spot we could click our cursor on the inner pink circle. That's the edge of the optic zone. This patient has 28 microns of fluid. Superior, heading inferior, 19. When there's under 40 microns of fluid at the edge of the optic zone, that typically means a symmetrical RGP lens will work well. We do not need a toric. When it's over 40 microns of fluid thickness at the edge of the optic zone, that's typically where a toric or some kind of asymmetric RGP may be required. Now we've got the right base curve to cornea relationship. The other thing we can do is vary the optic zone size by varying the peripheral curves if, if needed to change how that lens lands on the surface. As an example, if we were to reduce the optic zone size by widening out the peripheral curves, how would it change this landing when we click apply? We see that bearing point goes farther in. We get a slightly more shallow landing but a greater width of edge lift. 
If we were to go in the opposite direction, go much smaller, we see a more acute point of bearing with the peripheral cornea, a more aggressive angle as the contact lens comes back toward the surface. So you may find by altering the optic zone size slightly, you find that ideal lens to surface relationship where the base curve is coming toward the cornea, landing softly before the edge uh, kicks in and we get those peripheral curves bringing the edge up. Once you've designed the, the pattern that you would like to see both here and with the tear film profile at the bottom, you can go to data and all the lens specifications that you'll need are here.